It's Olympian review time. What are the Olympians? What am I talking about? All right, so if you're completely out of the loop, the Olympians are the next big thing that Harris has planned for the community in Smite. So essentially, you choose a few people that have gone through the first selection process now, and you vote for them, and the ones that go through will be representing you in the future. They will be representing you at Hyres events, have a meet and greet with Hyres where they discuss changes, ideas, all that kind of stuff for the game. And it's up to you to figure out who's the best fit for that and who's going to be useful for that down the road. The question that I always get is, why am I not on this list? Why did I not apply? I explained this in the past video, but just to briefly, briefly run this down, I think I, as a content creator, get a lot of the perks that the Olympians get already as is. A lot of that is already basically covered by Hyrus for me. I have ways to get to HRX through them. I get to the press events and whatnot. I, yeah, everything on that side is covered. I also have ways to reach out to Hyrus if I have problems. I'm not saying they will always follow what I say, but I have the way to just ping someone and be like, hey, this is not working out. I, why is it that way? Can that be changed? And half the time I get a response. So I think for me, it's not worth going in this and I would just be taking benefits from somebody else. And without further ado, let's go into how many people we can get. And that is one PC delegate for a focus on conquest, with a focus on conquest, one for a focus on non-conquest modes, and the same thing for Xbox and for PlayStation. So we have six in total, but then we also have three general delegates on any platform as voted by the community. Unfortunately, the voting system doesn't quite support these three general delegates because they're kind of like chosen from the highest votes or whatever, we don't really know, but we can vote for the rest at least. Term length is 12 months and then they cannot really leak anything, blah, 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 yada, yada. You, you get the idea. But we know who is out there already. So you can go on the page, smitegame.com slash Olympians, and you can log in and then it will ask you if it's the wrong account. And once you've figured that out and you're on your account, you will get the options. And you can filter by platform here and you can show only Conquest folks. And we're going to do that for every platform. And I'm going to tell you who I think are good fits, who I personally give my endorsement for, uh, and also a few people where I think they're maybe not the best fits. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really annoy some people with this one. I'm sorry in advance. It's nothing personal. It's just my take on who I think you know should be in here or shouldn't. We'll start with my primary most uh, highly anticipated, most endorsed, most supported vote, and that is Flareboot. Uh, if you're following me for a while, you know that I often use information from Flareboot's uh, word of thought. I am generally in touch with Flareboot a lot just to discuss back and forth over balance things, over meta things, over numbers. Uh, we have a group in which we talk and all that kind of stuff. So if you want anyone that basically is closest to what I represent in the smite scene uh, and has this connection of both, you know, knowing what's going on in the casual scene, but also what's going on on a competitive level, that is Flareboot for you. So my first vote will absolutely go to Flareboot. In his case, I'll also read the full biography just so you have some more insight from his side. Extremely passionate fan of smite has become my favorite game going back to October 2012 and want to see it constantly improving. It has given me a vast community to interact with, the chance to meet people from a swathe of other countries with my two visits to HRX, plus making friends I hope to have for the rest of my life. My passion also led to creating the Word of Thoth, an in-depth mechanics guide for the game to help players understand more. I've had experience in multiple roles in the community, from coaching an SPL level uh, to theory crafting and communication with Hyrus and Titanforge over the years, identifying and helping to fix issues with the game. Half of the fixes, like the, the minor fixes that you see, is probably something that Flab would send in most of the time. Being an Olympian would be an amazing opportunity for me to represent our great community to bring more to the game I've loved for over a quarter of my life. My first vote, you, you see the reasons in here as well, but yeah, I've, I think I've, I've, uh, I've summed it all up. If there's one person I think you should definitely spend a vote on, it's Flareboot. 
Now, there are some weird rule sets for how you can vote and who you can vote for. And apparently, you're only supposed to be able to vote for one conquest focused person and then one non conquest focused person. But then again, some people somehow have voted for multiple conquest focused person people. So, you know, it's just not, I don't know, whatever. Just try it. So, let's talk about the rest here, right? Um, what I will say is, I think with two exceptions, Two to three exceptions here, everyone uh, on this particular list is a good fit. Uh, some I don't know enough about, um, but one thing that I will say is that I think voting for someone from the US is a bit of a waste. Sorry to everyone from the US here, but uh, high risk covers the flight cost for people coming overseas to, to go to the studios and all that kind of stuff and to HRX. For someone from, from Europe or from somewhere else, this means they save $1,000 in a year or more. For someone from Georgia, it means they save fuel costs to drive to the studio. Uh, sure, they don't get the same reach. It, you know, they, they are not able to communicate as closely with high -res, So there are benefits for them in that as well. But you get the idea, you know, where's the profit in that in comparison? And I also say some people, in my opinion, are not critical enough of Hyrus. And I know for a fact that Flairwood is one of the people that is very critical of Hyrus when he has to be. Uh, some others are very closely affiliated with Hyrus or just don't really like talking negatively about it when it comes to situations like that. So I wouldn't endorse some of those. So my second endorsement here out of the people uh, would go to Alpha Jekyll. I don't need to introduce Alpha Jekyll. You all know who Alpha Jekyll is. Uh, yeah. I think it would be really cool if, if Virtus could get in as well as a representative for uh, Oceania because they they really need that over there. Unfortunately, he got, went on conquest focus. I think if he went non-conquest focus, that could have worked better because I think the competition is a bit large. And there's one person I want to, I guess, call out here. Uh, not really. I don't have any qualms with him. I think Wachi does great stuff, you know. He is the creator for, for the non-English speaking community basically for, for the Spanish community so that's cool I just don't think he should be on this list I don't think he should be on a list for Olympians uh, and I've, I've actually talked to a Hyrus employee about that before that I think large content creators that already get the perks don't really like have any reason to be here and I know for a fact that what she gets invites from Hyrus uh, every Wells he gets invites to the media events outside of that and as far as I know, he's going to play competitive next season, unless that has changed. Maybe I'm misinformed here. But uh, if that's the case, then he won't even have time to focus on this at all. And I think he's still going to get a lot of votes from his fans anyways, but I kind of think he really shouldn't be getting this spot. Like, I mean, Alpha Jekyll, I know, is, is probably only going to take it if he doesn't coach. Uh, maybe watch his situation has changed, but even then, again, I think he will still get most of these benefits as a content creator, as most bigger content creators that haven't, like, had any qualms with Hyrus do, and if they had any qualms with Hyrus, they wouldn't get in this anyway. So, yeah, that that one's the only one where I specifically say, please don't. Everyone else is fine. And then we have the non-conquest. And in the non-conquest area, there are two people, again, that I will uh, personally endorse. Um, Triple Charged being the first one. A head mod for Reddit and also very involved in the community across all sides and through being on Reddit and, and through being also on Twitter and everything and, and active indifference my community, he has a very good overview of, you know, what's going on where uh, just, you know, someone who's, who's seen a little bit of all of it and, and has this great insight and I think that is a very, very good fit, especially for the non-conquest focus, non -conquest focus part where that's a bit more relevant. Second uh, would obviously go to Trelly Rally. With Trelly Rally, I'm a bit concerned that he is uh, kind of, you know, more of a content creator than he is, is uh, in the community that much. Uh, and I think he would have less time to focus on this specifically compared to somebody like Triple Charge. But at the end of the day, that may also just misjudging the situation right now. Again, there are also more people that would definitely be suitable here. There's at least two more people on this list that I know of that would be good fits too. I just, you know, have to limit myself somewhere. And then there are also a lot of people that I don't know. And that brings us to the next platform and that is Xbox. On Xbox, focused on Conquest, I have exactly one recommendation and that is Kitten of Doom. She doesn't actually know about this. Most of the others have I've at least let known at some point. Kitten of Doom has no idea that I'm recommending her right now. Um, 
I think Kitten of Doom has been working within the console community, especially uh, for a while. She's been trying to do things like um, like a, a highlight thing for players where they can send in their missions and, and they get shown and all that kind of stuff. So she's been involved and I like that. And I, I think she's somebody, just seeing from how involved she is with people uh, that could work well here. Unfortunately, she doesn't maybe have the the competitive side of things, which I think is always cool, we'll, you know, have some insight in that regard as well, but can't have it all. And then uh, for the for the overall uh, players here, we have a few more names, and I'll be honest, I don't know any of the non-conquest uh, players to a degree that I could recommend them without, you know, it being an issue for me later down the road because I recommended someone who actually did something horrible or whatever, so uh, I'm not going to say anything here, but, you know, if you want to vote for someone, recommendation is read this. Click on that more, see what they say, their reasons are, why they justify it, and maybe how long they played as well, and you'll have a good idea of if they're worth voting for or not. And then we have PS4. On PS4, let's start with the Conquest only. I have no idea. Again, same situation. I don't know any of these people well enough to recommend anyone. Um, yeah, that's it. But I have a recommendation to make for the non-conquest players, or rather also kind of two recommendations. Uh, again, also going a little bit against the theme of, of uh, what I had with the previous one, of saying that it's better if it doesn't go to US people. I already had that for the non-conquest uh, people before that I recommended. I said sometimes it seems that the US people are the better fit after all, and, and here we only have one non-US, so it's like... Uh, I'm not going to just, just recommend him because he's non-US. And uh, the first one that I'm going to recommend here is Fro Double G. Also just going to read his biography here. I am a co-host of Battleground of the Guards, a Smite podcast. I'm also trying to have a Twitter presence as well. I love Smite and want to see this game thrive and grow. I would love to be an Olympian to help the community have a voice. I already have a handful of people who look to me for advice or thoughts on the state of the game or for general advice. Being someone... Uh, being someone... People want to talk to about Smite is one of the best feelings in the world. I love the Smite community and don't want it to dissolve. <laughs> this is a good goal at the moment. The community should vote for me because I'll be doing something similar regardless. I already asked people what they think, think about the game and what changes can help it constantly in our Discord. I love interacting with the community and would love to be their voice. Many people think Titanforge doesn't listen to us average players, and I want to help change that. It would be an honor to be part of the team speaking on behalf of this wonderful community. I also just realized that white text on this background is not great. But yes, uh, for LG, great guy. Obviously, through the podcast, already involved in the Smite community, uh, already has his own thing going and, and can kind of uh, transition from there. Uh, met him in person as well, very, very nice person. And the other one that I want to recommend, also someone who doesn't know about that at all, is Dirtnapstad. Dirtnapstad, a long time dedicated player. When I play a game, I play it for a long time and learn how to play it right. From EverQuest to World of Warcraft to Smite has been my journey. Currently, I'm the host for the Split Push podcast, which is Smite focused from the console perspective. I love to learn and share that to build a bigger and healthier community for the games I love. Again, somebody else who also does a podcast. Uh, I've had some interactions with him. They were all very pleasant. And in that context, I can recommend him. And yeah, I think uh, being someone who has a lot of experience or is a little bit more mature, a little bit older, often helps as well. I think uh, a lot of the people applying here are rather young and having someone who is a bit more of age, a bit more level-headed can definitely be beneficial too. So those are my recommendations. That doesn't mean, doesn't mean at all that the ones that I didn't talk about are not worth voting for. It's simply that I don't know enough about them. If any of you that is on this list uh, feels like they haven't been represented here and want to be represented, absolutely feel free to, to post down in the comments and uh, write while you think you would be a good fit. Maybe for one of the roles that I haven't uh, chosen someone for, especially. Uh, and maybe you can get some people to vote for you. I think overall this is, is a good idea. I think it's unfortunate that it's laid out the way it is because uh, we have these three representatives that just kind of come in afterwards that we don't 
we don't really know where they're coming from, like how, how it's going to work with them. Uh, and we also already had some awkward drama. So what happened when you originally would vote for, uh, for Watchy is that the moment you select this, you would select Savvy as well. You will literally, and when you click this, this would get marked too. And yeah, as such, the votes for Savvy are screwed right now. I don't know if they will be fixed. Savvy wouldn't be a terrible fit. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I personally, uh, I, feel, I feel bad about this, right? Because I think Savvy had a legitimate chance to get a decent amount of votes, but if she wins now uh, and Hyrus doesn't clear out these votes beforehand, then it'll just be like, yeah, she just got those votes because of the glitch. And it's very likely that Watchy is going to get a lot of votes. So it's just one of these things where you just wish it wouldn't happen. Wish it was just, just, just go like smooth for once and, and no issues. But maybe, maybe it'll get resolved and maybe it'll get traced back somehow. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. But last but not least, that's just a smart part of things, right? There, there's not enough funny things in this video aside of the fact that I haven't shaved and that looks kind of funny. But this... The Paladins, uh, <laughs> Paladins website has, has an option to vote as well, right? They have the same thing. And uh, I found a pretty funny one through somebody else who tweeted at it. And Mountain Goat just went into them a little deeper. And these are, <laughs> these are the options that you can vote for on the Paladin side. Iron Hearth. How long have you played Paladins? One year. Biography. Ah... Uh, Swastika 125. Great name, buddy. How long have you played Paladins? One hour. Biography. I love Paladins I played with my cousin. Paul Anthony Led. How long have you played Paladins? One. Biography. Playing game. Hi, I'm Manu. How long have you played Paladins? 15 hours. Biography. As does, 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 does. Dark Barricade. How long have you played Paladins? 213 hour. Biography. Feel good. Tyranskar. Tyrfor ansk for our. How long have you played Paladins? Seven months. Biography. I think I can be friendly with others. NK3FE. How long have you played Paladins? One. Biography. Data. Bard and Carney. How long have you played Paladins? Beginning. Biography. I'm just the guy you need to win the hearts of fans. We'll see about that one. Well done. Well done, Paladins. We had some questionable uh, filters on PC. Some people didn't, or on, on Smite in general, some people that should have gotten in, or I thought should have gotten in, didn't get in, ripped to find pride. Meanwhile... <laughs> Meanwhile, on the Paladin side of things. At least it's entertaining, right? So does the Mountain Goat for collecting that. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gave you a good overview of the, well, Olympian side of things. And we'll make you choose accordingly. Again, vote for boot or, or dislike the video. Yeah, do that. See how many people actually don't like Flabu to the point that they would dislike the video for it. And I'll see you for the next one tomorrow. If you're new to the channel, please stop by the bell that we have seen out. Duke Sloth, out.